Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Anurekha Chariwag, Assistant Professor, Department of Sociology, Savitri Bhai Phule, Pune University. I have coordinated the paper on Sociology of Gender. In this module on Emergence of Women's Studies, we are going to focus on looking at the relationship between knowledge, power and politics. Especially, we will focus on how disciplines get shaped through the policies and programs of either the government or in terms of institutions such as ICSSR and uh, issues such as Indian Associations of Women Studies. Further, we will also look into the relationship between movements and knowledge. We will also discuss about how women's studies is referred to as the intellectual arm of women's movement in India. Further, we will also focus on how gender is very closely related in terms of the nature of how disciplines are shaped, especially in terms of gender biases within disciplines. At the end, we will focus on the higher education policy, role of the institutions and as mentioned above, ICSSR, Government of India and Indian Association of Women's Studies. Emergence of Women's Studies in India The module while analyzing the emergence of women's studies will address the following questions. How did the emergence of women's studies help to counter the gender-blind analytical frameworks, mythologies and theoretical perspectives within sociology? How has a women's movement impacted and gave direction to the growth of women's studies and how the latter then influenced campaigns and programs of women's movement in India? In an analyzing the emergence of women's studies, the focus should be on one interrelationship of women's movement and women's studies, the nature of women's studies emerging from the women's studies centers, three, the kind of women's studies that has been developed and nurtured within mainstream and mainstream disciplines and fourth, the role played by the government policies, autonomous government institutions such as ICSSR and UGC in shaping women's studies. Such analysis is important as there is very close relationship between academic and activism where they not only draw strength from each other but in many contexts also has been at loggerheads with each other. Strong differences within activism, understanding of feminism as feminisms and as Sharma states that institutional location of feminist practices have become sites of contest. Redefining and reconceptualization of concepts, theories and analysis has shifted the disciplinary boundaries of a number of disciplines and by of an interdisciplinary approach has made women's studies a holistic one as it focuses on interconnection. Section 1. The Context of Emergence of Women's Studies Mazumdar and Shah state that the aim of women's studies is to seek to search for answers to women's problems within the historical cultural framework of a society, evolution of policies and strategies for development and address the gaps and biases embedded within concepts, theories and methodologies of social research. According to them, the standardized indicators used by the established social science disciplines are limited in their approach. Therefore, they fail to analyze the complex experiences of women within the larger society. Women's studies is generally used to denote research and teaching and probe into historical, cultural and contextual determination of status and also seek out women's presence, voice and expression in history, literature and creative arts. What were then the limitations of earlier studies and research on women? Mazumdar and Sharma have argued that the earlier research on women often perceived them as universal category and focused on the position of women within elite and high caste women. It was a growth of nationalist movement that was a political movement for independence that argue Mazumdar and Shah that resulted in shift as far as perspectives in women's studies are concerned. Now the women's issues were projected within the larger discourse of the principles of equality of rights, status, opportunities for participation in the process of national development. Such shifts lead to increased visibility and emphasis on research and debate on women's issues. Chitness highlights the role of Government of India, United Nations, ESCAP, World Bank, International Labour Organization, and ICSSR in raising the discussion on different aspects of women's lives, economic status, health, education and fertility. She further adds that the research generated on women was critical of government policies and programs which highlighted issues of women's oppression and thus raised the need for alternative to current policies and programs pushed for the institutionalization of women's studies in India. Further highlighting the role of Gandhi in shaping women's political participation, Majumdar and Shah contend that he pushed for women's historic role as women were projected as political vanguards of a radical but non-violent process of social transformation and this pushed for a fundamental redefinition of sex roles. What was unfortunate was that such a historically significant shift had little impact on the work of mainstream social scientists who continued their research without engaging with the political social development that were emerging in the world outside. As Chaudhary states, the emergence of feminism in India has to be understood in the following context. 
history of colonialism and emergent nationalism, a subsequent advance within the trajectory of independent India state initiated development transferred context of globalization and the India's own success story in it, growing assertion of the marginalized caste and the communities which has led to a complex deepening of the democratization process in India. Section 2. Growth of Women's Studies in India The political context of post-1975 researchers were distinctly different as towards Equality Report 1974 provided the framework to situate women's studies in India and believed to be the watershed in the field of women's studies in the country. Mazumdar states that the guiding principles of the committee are significant, they could well be read as a manifesto of women's studies in India. According to her, the report defined a new set of agenda for women's studies in India as it pushed the discipline to take cognizance of the diversity, change and plurality within the country. It is important to note that the Indian Council of Social Science Research, ICSSR, an autonomous agency sponsored by the Government of India that adopted in the early 70s as the status of women in India is a priority area when it commissioned studies for the CSWI and took it forward by promoting a new initiative of women's studies in 1976. The program on women's studies seeks to promote social science research to understand women's lives and problems and the manner in which they are being affected by the process of social change, economic modernization and population dynamic. Analyzing the challenges highlighted in the report, ICSSR in the program, women's studies identified three objectives. One, to identify and work for needed policy change. Two, to persuade the social science community to re-examine the methodology, concepts, theories and analytical apparatus of social research from the entire arena of social investigations. And three, to revive the social debate on women's question which had emerged as a major issue during the freedom struggle but has faded in the post-independence period. Desai states that the priority areas identified for research during the first phase included changes in the occupational structure, emerging trends, evaluation of development programs, patterns of family organization and socialization practices, causes and consequences of excess of female over male migration, women's movement and role in the decision making process. In this context, the pioneering efforts of SNDT Women's University Research Unit on Women's Studies established in 1974 needs to be mentioned. Rege states that the efforts of the SNDT Sociology Department in offering courses on women and society at a time when there was no acceptability from the mainstream have been path-breaking. One of the important ideas underscoring the National Conference on Women's Studies was a recognition that untransformation of the structures of ethos of quality and behavior through the unity of social and scientific studies mobilizing action and spreading awareness which made the conference more of a movement and not limited to conference proceedings. Further, what was important in the National Conference on Women's Studies 1980 was that the decision to form Indian Association of Women's Studies was taken. Desai et al. state that the objectives of Indian Association of Women's Studies include 1. Developing and disseminating information, organizing specific action programs, assisting institutions to develop programs of teaching, research and action. The association seeks to break the isolation between academic activities and social action by opening its membership to all engaged in teaching, research and action for women's development. The association seeks to provide a broad base for initiating and advocating expansion of women's studies. Section 3 Institutionalization of Women's Studies A striking feature of women's studies is that it is an area that seems immediately intelligible and cognizable because its focus on women is stated upfront in the very act of naming the field. Hira Desai's early characterization enables us to comprehend how the field of women's studies was conceptualized in its founding moment. She points out that women's studies is to be understood as an instrument for women's development and also as a necessary input to deepen the knowledge base of various disciplines. Women's studies has to be understood not merely in the context of research and teaching but also action. Although women's studies emerged from an academic context, it was closely linked to the women's movement of the late 70s and the early 80s. Many scholars and researchers associated with the women's studies were also active members of the women's movement and vice versa. This blurring of boundaries between the academic and the activist peers resulted in the institutionalization of women's studies both in the university and non-university locations. This institutionalization therefore took place prominently through the forms listed below. Women's studies centers established by the university grants commission within universities. Women's studies cells within specific university departments and in centers and in colleges in comparison with centers the cells have limited autonomy as well as mandate which in turn impacts on their budgets and programs. Women's studies in non-university locations in form of autonomous or non-governmental organizations.
individual scholars located either within specific institutions or working as non-affiliated researchers to have made extremely critical contributions in the field. As Sharma states, early studies were making invisible women visible and the challenge was to question many assumptions, data, concepts, methodology and theories. Thus, an analysis of the growth of women's studies in India highlights the impact of women's movement in post-independent India. As Jain and Rajput state that the growth of this discipline was propelled by an interest in equity and justice and drew inspiration from grassroots level experience of women's organization. In analyzing the relationship between women's movement and women's studies, Desai argues that since women's studies was envisioned as the intellectual arm of women's movement, some analysts feel that the transformative role of women's studies has often remained elusive as gatekeepers within academy question the credentials, quality and relevance of women's studies. Since 1986-87, UGC has invited proposals from universities to establish women's study centers. This is John State's institutionalization of women's studies has taken the shape of research centers and women's studies centers in the universities. The aim of the research centers include, among others, to raise awareness on gender issues, to do independent gender-based research and community action, and conduct interdisciplinary research. Sharma states that right from the beginning, women's studies underscored the necessary and integral connection between feminist scholarship and feminist practice in shaping issues and agendas, and there is a deliberate focus on gender inequalities and emphasis as an emancipatory agenda. But on the other hand, the politics of mainstreaming women's studies within institutions of higher education had to confront the power of patriarchal academy and knowledge hierarchy as feminist scholarships was placed within a web of complex relationships. The impact of women's studies on the academy has also been widely acknowledged. For instance, a well-known sociologist, Sandri Bete, states, Few development in recent years have generated as much enthusiasm in Indian academic world as women's studies. New areas of inquiry have been opened up in literary studies, in philosophy, sociology, psychology, history, political science and other disciplines in the humanities and social sciences. Established concepts and methods are being put to question and what was once accepted as facts now no longer appear as such. Sharmila Ray draws attention to Bete's concern with women's studies. Bete commenting on feminism in the academia begins by granting that developments in women's studies have generated enthusiasm in the academic world. However, assuming that all of women's studies is not exclusionary, he concludes on a different note. He argues that unless diverse viewpoints, perspectives of both the sexes are accommodated, women's studies could damage the credibility of the very institutions in which they are located. In the first two decades following institutionalization, centers of women's studies, together with the women's movement, had a significant role to play in influencing policy decisions of the government, whether in relation to the field of education or the general polity. Additionally, in the context of institutionalization, Sharma states that women's studies face contradictory institutional pulls and pressures. One, not to develop as a separate discipline and yet intervene within the higher education and respond to agendas of international agencies, gender sensitization training, programs, income generation activities, issue-based campaigns, etc. Sharma argues that institutional locations may itself become a site of contest. As Majumdar feels that the real feminist dilemma is balancing the politics of protest with the politics of construction and reform. Further, the major developments in the 21st century feminism has been the emergence of the Dalit Bahujan feminist movement and studies and Dalit women's identity and caste, class and gender as intellectual priority in women's studies. In recent times, women's studies continues to deal with the challenge of establishing the validity of its interventions at the level of methodological and conceptual. The issue of ghettoization is another concern of women's studies. As Papu argues that it is ironic that where women's studies had sought to impact disciplinary thinking and knowledge production as a whole, it has over a period of time come to be regarded only as a specialized topic. In all, the broad trends within women's studies can be observed as 1. Although the experiences of grassroots organizations are important for women's studies, their impact on academic discourses remains negligible given the conservative institutional structures within which women's centers operate. 2. Within the women's studies centers, teaching is sometimes a weak point as most of the centers lack full teaching strength. Teaching materials, lack of funds, lack of personal and institutional apparatus to establish itself as an autonomous discipline. 3. Women's studies in India critically engages with other disciplines. The interdisciplinary nature of women's studies has facilitated women's studies centers to integrate gender issues and perspectives into other disciplines. Further, collaborative researchers have started dismantling barriers between social sciences and humanities departments department, emphasizing on interdisciplinarity as a strength of women's studies.
fourth, the strength of women's study centers lies in its vibrant syllabi. At some of the centers, the syllabi are creative and strive towards balance between theory and practice. Specifically, in centers of Pune and Jadavpur, there is an explicit connection between feminist theory and local, regional, national, and global feminist networks. Finally, the challenge faced by women's studies lies in the interlinking the personal with the political. As Jane and Rajput state that women's studies involves a double journey. The internal journey where the person can herself grow into what can be informally called a feminist and the second is the external journey where one teaches it formally in institutions. In this module, we have discussed about how the emergence of women's studies in India is a challenging process. We have also focused on the special challenges faced by women's studies. We have focused on the challenges which include the conservative university environment within which many of the women's studies centers are placed. Further, we have also looked into the impact of market forces on women's studies. And we have also looked into the disjuncture between activism, especially this is very important because as discussed in the module, women's movement is referred women's studies as its intellectual arm. Further, we have also focused on the uneasy alliance between the scholars and the activists. Further, because of the fact that many of the women's study centers are placed within university departments, there is also a ghettoization of women's study centers within the whole structure. Further, we have also focused on the exclusionary nature of women's studies. In this whole module, we have therefore focused on the process of institutionalization, which has posed a major challenge to the whole idea of women's studies. At the end, with this whole argument in terms of women studies in India, we have also looked into how the emergence of Dalit Bahujan feminists is posing a major challenge to women's studies and therefore we need to have a very important understanding of the critical role played by policy within the whole idea of women's studies.